Update on the chip shortage. Despite being not much bigger than a quarter, semiconductor chips played a big part in the big slowdown of new cars across the country. So, what's the news now? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. The amazing Elizabeth is here today, and we've prepared a very intense presentation for you today on the current status of the chip shortage. You know, it's interesting how something so small can play such a big role in the car market, right? Right. Well, as our loyal followers know, the Homework Guy channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale and great market updates like this one. Exactly. If you're new here, you have a lot of catching up to do, and there's tons of videos on our channel covering car buying strategies and everything you need to know, from paying for a car with cash to avoiding becoming the victim of fraud at a dealership. If you're among the hundreds of thousands of highly intelligent subscribers on our channel, here's your chance to show us how smart you are. Subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The Homework Guy is the best show and the best car buying advice you can find online. No punches pulled there now, was there? As many car buyers are noticing several dealers have empty car lots, well, slowly emptied out over the last several months, car buyers have had increasingly limited options to choose from when it came to new vehicles and that trickled into used cars as well. Many of you have just decided to wait it out. If you made that decision, well, you're one of the smart group of car buyers out there, which by no coincidence also happens to make you a avid homework guy viewer. Exactly. There are tens of thousands of new vehicles sitting in manufacturers' parking lots waiting for semiconductor chips to arrive. Many want to know, why are these chips such a big deal and where are we at now? Well, a little background first, if you didn't already know. The semiconductor chips that Liz is referring to are made from silicon, a substance found in most of the minerals on the Earth's surface. Well, computers, smartphones, appliances, devices, many things besides cars rely upon them. It's over a $500 billion industry and provides either a catalyst or a bottleneck in this case to a $3 trillion global tech industry. Ow. Most of the raw materials for chips are obtained from areas in Japan and Mexico with a big chunk of the chips being made in Taiwan, China's favorite punching bag. And of course, a few from China itself and some coming from the United States too. Well, take a look at the chart here on the screen. It shows where most of the chips came from and where the revenue is being made in that chip market. Taiwan is clearly running away with the show. While the U.S. leads the world in chip design, the truth is the United States needs to get more serious about doing a lot more manufacturing right here on our own that soil. That would really help. That's finally happening as a recent announcement made that $52 billion is being invested in semiconductor manufacturing right here in the U.S. The problem of a chip shortage emerged as a result of two interesting and colliding factors. First, the global pandemic made more people interested in devices like cell phones, tablets, laptops. This increased the chip demand to a point where it was going to be difficult to keep up anyway. And secondly, many car manufacturers, particularly the domestic manufacturers, rolled the dice and made the decision to shut down or significantly reduce their production, and some did it longer than others. They gambled, and like any gamble, you can lose big time, and, well, they did. It doesn't take someone like me to tell these industry giants how smart it sounds when you say to your suppliers, we don't want your stuff right now, <laughs> all while the demand is exploding in other areas. Well, nobody should have been surprised that when you step out of line, you go to the back of the line. You go to the very end, and that's what happens. Get out of the line. Of, <laughs> yes. Hey, sounds like a little John Panette there. <laughs> yes, they all thought car sales would nosedive, and as expected, sales did suffer a huge drop initially, but the rebound was much faster than manufacturers thought, and they were too slow getting back into the game. There is a third factor involved here. Perhaps by some weird twist of fate, Renaissance Electronics in Japan had a fire in the plant. Oh. The damage was extensive, but as of today, the plant is reportedly at full production as of mid-June. That is helping, but if I was a betting man, and I'm not, I'd say that mostly helps Toyota, Honda, Mazda, and other Japanese manufacturers. Alex Partners in Southfield, Michigan reports that the chip shortage could cost the global auto industry $110 billion this year, and $2 billion of that are losses by GM right in their backyard. Here's the interesting part. GM is now reporting that they believe chip supplies will return to normal in the second half of the year, and they are expecting to begin moving a lot of those vehicles they currently have parked in big storage parking lots. The Alliance for Auto Innovation said the shortage could also hurt auto production for another six months, resulting in 1.3 million fewer new cars delivered to dealers by year's end. So as the production begins ramping up, and every indication is that it's on the road to writing itself, what will happen to new car prices? Well, logically, they should become cheaper at dealerships as 
fewer over MSRP deals that some of you got stuck with. Mm -hmm. There should be a lot less of those. There's some interesting data to take a look at. In the first week of June, the average listing price of a new vehicle was 40566 up nearly $200 from the end of May. As compared to 2020, that's up 5.5%. And compared to 2019, that's up 10.3%. Now, those numbers sound smaller, actually, in real price increases in the market, but that's not the actual selling price I'm talking about at car dealers. That's the MSRP increases since 2019 and 2020. With the chip shortage in play, many automakers have shifted whatever chips they have to their more in-demand and high-profit vehicles, such as pickups and SUVs. So you can expect those markets to rebound a little faster. That's generally true. However, Ford has announced more cuts to F-150 and Escape production. Not sure what's going on there, but it's freaking out the Ford dealers across (laughs) the country. For our viewers out there, did you know why chips are such a big deal? One car part could use as many as 500 to 1,500 chips, depending on what the part is. Doesn't that kind of blow your mind? It sure does. It gives you a little perspective and a realization of how many chips have to be made. It's crazy. All right, let's talk about the short run and then the light at the end of the tunnel. With chip manufacturing steadily improving, some manufacturers are adding to the acceleration of getting cars back to the market by eliminating some options. You'll likely see vehicles on the lot with fewer bells and whistles, but not a major problem in my books. A lot of those fringe options are very costly and don't do much to improve the ownership experience anyway. Now, as far as light at the end of the tunnel, I predict that the car industry will find a way out of this mess over the next 12 to 18 months. Some of the problem will be fixed by year's end, so look for those deals out there. I don't personally need any new vehicles right now, and I know many others who are in the same position. I'll be buying again next year and perhaps into the following spring. I encourage all of you to continue practicing that financial discipline and make the best decision for you when it comes to a car purchase. Make the industry fix itself before you jump back in again. Many automakers are also talking about going vertical with chip production, meaning they'll bring it in-house and take direct responsibility for their own chips to make sure there are no future capacity constraints. Now, Volkswagen has been a surprising leader in this push, already moving in that direction. That is a little bit of a surprise. Sure. That's all good for the future of the auto industry. A funny tidbit to close on. Did you guys know that for the most part, the most expensive luxury loaded vehicles are purchased by people who could never pay cash for them? In other words, by people who really can't afford them. Mm. Meanwhile, the people with the most money in life buy very reasonable cars. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying most of them. The more money a person has, the less they try to buy the fanciest, most expensive car in the market just to impress their friends. Good move. Really tells you a lot about how people value money, why the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. Yeah. There's a tip in there for you people with Ferrari taste, but a Chevy Impala budget. <laughs> Stop biting off more than you can chew, especially as it pertains to cars, that rapidly depreciating hunk of metal, and you'll suddenly find that you have more money in the bank. What a concept, huh? If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, including hashtag the homework guy. And look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list here on the screen, and they're also linked in the description box below. And if you're new here, as Kevin always reminds you, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people, a number that's rapidly growing. And you might as well benefit from all that great content, too. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. No problem if you can't do a tip, however. The best way you can help us out is to share this video with your family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. Encourage everyone to subscribe and, of course, ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. And I think we do a pretty doggone fine job of it, don't you think, Liz? You betcha. All right, thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with The Amazing Elizabeth. We We gotta gotta go. go.